how do you communicate how do you communicate these pretty bold and and often nuanced initiatives with people who are not healthcare wonks inside your organization uh that is the 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 biggest <laughs> of challenges because i think all of us in benefits so we, we when you're sort of up and coming you're speaking to other benefits people and you're inhaling your own exhaust and they oh they're all getting it and that sounds great and then you walk into the you know the, the division manager or the plant manager or your cfo and you get bounced out on your ear because you're not you have you don't even speak their language um, right you 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 don't you, they don't even know what the hell you're talking about so I, I, uh, one of the other things that's also been really important for me and billing through sort of what I'm going with that is I think it's the fifth habit of the highly of, of, uh, of habits for highly effective people. And that's seeking first to understand, then be understood. understood. You, you, the first, the, when you're pitching something wild or something innovative, it better not be the first time you're meeting that stakeholder because you're starting with one foot in the ground. You, you've got to do your homework, get out ahead of time get to understand their business, understand what's going on in the field. Is it a unionized population? Is it a not unionized population? Is it a growing business? Is it a, a segment of the business that might be not as growing, might be more just sort of steady as you're going, or might be looking for an acquisitive? Are they an R&D part of the business? You know, they all have differentiates. A lot of companies, particularly the large, large companies, don't have one culture. There's a number of subcultures and sub things going in. So when you want to innovate or you want to do something, you've got to understand your context and understand that first and then adapt what you're trying to do to that concept. That's been critical. And there have been many times that I've kind of walked in, you know, into meetings and started talking about, you know, you know we're going to manage the health of our population. I'm talking to the business person who's like trying to make a, a, a deal. I, I remember there's right. one, one episode where I was trying to, um, it was more on the potential side on something to do with multi-employer plans. And I was asking for $2 million. And I, I thought I had a really perfectly well thought out proposal. The CFO was nodding. Yes. Very well thought out. Great point. Yep. If we don't do it now, it's going to cost us more. Uh -huh, mm -hmm. And you need $2 million. Huh? No. no. <laughs> and, and I, I was you know, shocked. I was like, where he goes, no, he goes, you're, you had some very cogent argument. That's very well thought out. It's very well prepared. But, and I think this is a subtle important for business benefits people when you go into the business. Your CFO is making ROI or value decisions. You know, even if you have a two to one ROI, that might not be enough because they're deciding between R&D, they're deciding between a business transaction, they're deciding to be a deal. So they've got to put it in that context to going, well, you're asking for 2 million, but I'm just about to buy, and I'm making this, buy, buy another business that I just need the cash. So right. sort of really understanding the context and then sort of being able to lay it in their, you know, portray it in the language. And in a way they'll understand, look, this is going to be disruptive. Here's how we're going to manage the disruption and we'll go through, we'll do it a different time of year or we'll go through, but it's really about understanding once you leave benefits, you know, understanding the rhythm of the business and the context of what you're trying to do. Cause, and sometimes it just may not be the right time to do it, you know, and, Put it on the shelf. Um, I've always approached things being, you know, as a benefits leader. I said I've always, I'm always a first year in a three year strategy. <laughs> so I'm pending in things for next year, and maybe that gets penciled in for the year after, or the year after that, or there's something else that might be happening in the business that might make this the better timing for that. You don't always have to do everything now. You've got to really be planful. Just the way you would run a business, you don't do all your decisions now. You plan you make sure you've got things laid out when they make sense.